Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some PS2 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 4 using Ether SX2. If you're not familiar with Ether SX2, it's a new PS2 emulator for Android, and it does perform quite well when you have a higher-end Snapdragon chipset, like an 855, 860, 870, but when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 4, we're uh, kind of lacking on power here. But I've actually had a lot of my viewers asking about this, and I've done a little bit of testing, and to my surprise, I was actually able to get a couple games to run at full speed on the Raspberry Pi 4. So what I have here is a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model in the new Desk Pi case. I'm running my operating system from a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, and I do have it overclocked to 2 gigahertz. And when it comes to the operating system I'm using here, this is the latest version of ConstaKing's Lineage OS port for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's specifically designed for the Pi 4. It's based on Android 12, and there's lots of tweaks for the Raspberry Pi, like easy overclocking. We also have OpenGL and Vulkan support with this build here. And what I've done here is just install Google Play and download EtherSX2. I'm actually running these games from a micro SD card plugged into one of the USB 3.0 ports. And when it comes to the Raspberry Pi 4's SoC, we don't have a super powerful chip here. They do recommend using something like a Snapdragon 845 and up for EtherSX2. So with the emulator, we're set to unsafe. And unfortunately, with this build here, I just can't get OpenGL working. But Vulkan is working with EtherSX2 in this build of Android for the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm going to be using the Vulkan backend. We're going to be at the native resolution. And like I mentioned, I was able to get a couple of these games to run decently. Now it comes down to a lot of the 2D games, but we're still going to be testing out some 3D stuff here. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. This is an easier one to emulate, so I figured we'd start here. So I know it's a bit hard to see, but up in the top right hand corner we do have the FPS and everything listed there. We're in unsafe mode, we've got a lot of hacks going on, and it's really required to get this game to run like it is right now, which in my opinion isn't playable. But if you're familiar with emulation on the Raspberry Pi 4, this is still pretty impressive. I mean, it really comes down to the emulator itself. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this, and right now we're in the stock unsafe mode, so I'm going to get back into the settings, and we're going to go ahead and hack this thing out as much as possible. We're going to turn these cycles all the way to minus two, maximum underclock to three, and on screen you can see that Crash seems to be running a little faster, but uh, it's still not playable like it is. I mean, you could probably get through the game like this if you really wanted to, but I would rather play this on a higher end chip at 60 FPS. Unfortunately, the Pi 4 just isn't going to do it with this game. But this emulator really hasn't been out that long, and seeing it running on the Pi like this is still pretty impressive in my opinion. I'm sure it will get a little better down the road, but it's not going to run at full speed, at least on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, with the Raspberry Pi 5, which is just all speculation, there's a chance that we could get this to run a lot better once it's released. So it wasn't doing great with the Crash game, which is a 3D game. But when it comes to Marvel vs. Capcom 2, this is running way better than I ever thought it would. In my opinion, this is playable. Every once in a while, we do get some slowdowns. And if you really wanted to play this game on the Raspberry Pi 4, I would highly suggest using the Dreamcast version. But the PS2 version does work with Ether SX2. And with this, I just went back to the stock unsafe mode. So we're not running as many hacks as we were at the end of Crash. And here's another 3D game. Not great. Tried a bunch of different settings here. And, you know, I've actually had good luck with the GameCube version of this on lower end hardware. So I thought it might work. Got some Dragon Ball Z. It's a 3D fighting game. And you can see that we're not at 60. We're at about 30 FPS. Still really slow. Again, tried a bunch of different hacks. And I wish I could get OpenGL working with this build of Ether SX2 but only software and Vulkan is working right now, at least with this build of Android that I'm using. Oh. 
here's another 2D fighting game, which in my opinion is playable on the Pi 4 here. This is Melty Blood, and we kind of see a pattern here where these 2D games are working much better. And I kind of suspect that this would happen going into PS2 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 4. Again, I can't stress it enough, we don't have a very powerful CPU in the Pi 4. Here's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, and going into this, you know, the menus look great, they were at 60, but when it comes to gameplay with those hacks on, you can definitely tell that we got some skipping going on. I've actually had really good luck with this game on lower-end MediaTek chips and cheaper Chinese phones and Ether SX2, so I figured we might get some decent performance. I mean, it's not super bad, but it's still not really playable. Going into Kingdom Hearts 2, I was really hoping we could get some better performance out of it. I tried a bunch of different uh, hack combinations from the settings, but unfortunately this is about the best I could get it to run on the Pi 4. I found that Gradius 5 actually worked pretty well, and I didn't try many more shrumps. I'll probably do that in the future, but as you can see here, this is also playable. I also tried a couple harder to emulate games, at least on x86 PCs with PC SX2, and something like Gran Turismo 4 just isn't going to run on the Pi 4. And finally here, kind of keeping with the trend that's working on the Pi 4, we've got another 2D fighting game, and this is also playable. So when it comes down to it, those 2D games work really well with the Pi 4 and the Ether SX2, but when it comes to the 3D stuff, we just don't have the power. So when it comes to PS2 on the Raspberry Pi 4, I definitely wouldn't rush out to buy one just for PS2 emulation. As you saw, there are some games that do run pretty decently on the Pi 4, which was really surprising going into this. I figured that we wouldn't get anything to run great on this little board. But as you saw in this video, with Constakang's latest version of Android for the Raspberry Pi 4, which is based on Android 12, and the newest release of Ether SX2 on the Google Play Store, some of these 2D PS2 games are playable on the Raspberry Pi 4. I was really surprised to see some PS2 games working on the Raspberry Pi 4. Even though they were the 2D games, I didn't expect it going into it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.